for us, every day is a new opportunity to make sure our first impressions are always our best and to see possibilities on the horizon. To make our facilities and services more accessible and find freedom all around us. With a location proximity to active markets, with a liberal air transportation policy, that daily pursuit is how we turn everyday opportunities for you. For all destination marketing support, customized packages for new existing airlines and operators, and for a highly ranked tourist destination, the Gambia Civil Aviation Authority is here to serve. We regulate air transport, operate and manage BIA technical requirements, merge with commercial considerations. We have experienced and well-trained aviation professionals to cater for your needs. For investment opportunities in building airport hotels, shopping malls, playground for children, do contact us on 4472-831, 4472-893. Gambia Civil Aviation Authority. We go beyond daily. Steward and Co. Solicitors, a legal excellence firm in London that can help you with all aspects of your legal work. If you are looking at immigrating to the United Kingdom, Stewart & Co. can help you to set up business, buy houses in the UK, and will deal with all your legal works from start to finish. For all your general immigration work, we can help you with that as well. If you apply for any form of visa, whether student visas, settlement visas, marriage visas, or a child wanting to come to the United Kingdom to settle with the family, we can help you to achieve your goals. Stewart & Co. Solicitors, a legal excellence firm specializing in conveyancing, immigration, litigation, family law, personal injury, licensing, no win, no fee. Contact us today at www.sk-solicitors.com. And do small or big projects with the same dedication and commitment as we do. With the reputation as the leading printing company in the country, when it comes to major projects and innovative solutions, we always deliver in high quality, thus receiving the trust and confidence of our clients. From the moment your order is placed to when it is delivered, we believe in exceeding expectations from the sales manager to the production team, the account manager, and the person delivering your material. We have state-of-the-art equipment and a highly experienced and competent workforce that enables us to deliver top quality work on time. At reasonable prices, we provide our clients with multiple solutions right from conceptualizing, designing, printing, binding, publishing, and distribution. For all your printing requirements, we are strategically located at the Sankumsila Highway, the Gambia Printing and Publishing Corporation. We print what you desire. Introducing Gamtel Corporate Internet for home use. See who everyone at home can be online at the same time and for less than you think. Now daddy can be home early and mommy and dad with the family can all have fun together. You can now complete your work at home with our stable, secure and super fast home broadband fixed wireless internet. Home internet couldn't be faster. Download, stream videos, research, play games, learn online and work from the comfort of your home. You can do with the internet. Join Gumtel Sihu today and enjoy the fastest home wireless broadband internet at an affordable monthly subscription. Gumtel, creating a brighter future in communications. And welcome to another edition of uh, Kilfato. Uh, tonight we are back here again to talk uh, about a very sensitive uh, topic, deportations. Uh, this has been something that has been trending on our social media and of course in our homes uh, because um, I remember two weeks ago we did have a conversation about deportation, Sajo, and we spoke to uh, Alaji uh, uh, who was one time in, in, in Germany as well, and he has got um, in, Italy. in Italy, he's got information about some of the things that happened in these camps. Mm -hmm. But again, what we have seen is that a lot of Gambians have been brought back 
and this has uh, brought a lot of uh, debate on social media but in our homes as well mm -hmm. because these are our brothers these are our sisters I have said this on the show but the fact of the matter is a lot of people are not talking about this issue and uh, but what we have seen recently last week the government has issued a statement mm -hmm. and uh, again a very strong statement because there have been a lot of issues out there that people have been saying about whether the government did sign or did not sign and today to talk about this we have a uh, a group, a Smiling Solidarity Network, mm -hmm. a group that has been set up to help these deportees. deportees. Um, they are uh, Silk, um, Ibrahim, and Mohammed. Welcome to Kefatu. Uh, Coming up on Kefatu. Will they deport now everyone? Will they deport only the ones that have no chance in Germany? What about because right now it is everything is very confusing. The date is finally here. Gamsel and Retreat Club of Bursubi is giving out this brand new Corando SUV. Text CAR car to 900 and grab your chance. The Grand Ruffle is on the 30th match. The more you text, the more chances you win. And remember, every SMS you text could save someone's life. There is more to win before the Grand Raffle. You could win televisions, smartphones, fridge freezers and many other special prizes at the end of every month. Text CAR CAR to 900 and increase your chances. A brand new SUV Corando awaits you on March 30th. Rudri, making a difference. Gamsel, Yaiboro. Sajid, today this is the discussion. Again, deportation. Deportation. Um, um, it's surprising that we are having this same conversation again because just two weeks ago we had the same discussion, of course, with Alaji Jenkin, like you rightly mentioned. Mm -hmm. But of course, this is something that needs to be talked about. Yeah. Just because we did it two weeks ago doesn't mean that we have to be silenced. Mm -hmm. It's a hot button issue right now, and everybody, everybody is outraged about it. For me, the most important thing is that the facts surrounding this issue are still sketchy. Yeah. We don't know. Mm -hmm. um, there is so much rumor, there is so much speculation. Of course, you you know, Gambian social media, everybody is like really, really outraged. And government has come out to issue a statement. And right now, the only, the, what's obvious is that the deportation is ongoing. Mm -hmm. That is very obvious. But what do we do? And how do we integrate these people into society is an equally important factor. Because two weeks ago, I was at the airport um, to receive some of the deportees. And there was a lot of hassle there. There was a, a lot of struggle between, of course, the airport officials and the journalists who were there to cover the arrival and uh, that was just one part of it but then i saw a man who like raised his hands on his head and then cried himself to the ground that's because his son was deported and, and i want to make this because you remember i travel um i just came back a few days ago and i joined the same flight with some gambians that have been deported and you know the reality really hit me so sad because when i got home i could not sleep at 3 a.m i had to make uh put up update my status on facebook talking about my experience meeting these gambians mm -hmm. and it's heartbreaking you know thinking this, this can be my brother this can be my family it's a very sensitive issue and i think it's important for us to welcome our guests who have got experience, they have uh, knowledge about what is happening. Mohammed, you are uh, a member of this group and you are the one on the ground in the Gambia. Can you tell us about Smiling Solidarity Network? Yeah, Smile Solidarity Network is a network formed in Germany mm -hmm. where by, by refugee helpers purposely to help asylum seekers in Germany. And it's a group that has been talking a lot, making a lot of efforts to see they have stopped deportation, trying to contact people, politicians, diplomats, and then to their lead person in Gambia too. But there was a lot of talk. And then I'm a type, I'm a social worker by profession. Mm -hmm. So I believe in action, you know. Yeah. So what I did, I get in contact with some of the where some of the people I believe they have creative minds in critical situation, people like him, mm -hmm. Brian C. And then we trying to put efforts together to see how to help the solidarity network. So that's what we have been doing all along. And then meeting people, interior ministers, activists, social workers, you know politicians to see how best because we have seen the way our brothers are brought back to us and then 
looking into the matter, they went illegally to Europe. And the Germans, they believe, hence they went illegally, they must all come back. So that as a reason, so many good people came together, you know, to put their hands together, visions together, thoughts together, to see how best to save most of these asylum seekers. Wow. Um, that's interesting, Sergio. Um, but again, um, Ibrahima is um, one person who's been working with the team as well. I think it would be good to, to have his perspective. What is the situation right now, Ibrahima? The yeah. situation is very confused, I would say, but mm -hmm. because of the lack of information and the lack of misunderstanding, right? There are, the, in, the government is not informing the people properly, and this is something that I really saw happening here because um, there is no statement, there is nothing. There's also no statement from the German side because also the German government is not clearly saying what they want to do. Will they deport now everyone? Will they deport only the ones that have no chance in Germany? What about, because right now it is, everything is very confusing mm -hmm. and that is confusing the people. And I think this is somehow a little bit concerning. I'm, I'm a little bit curious because not just Gambia is involved in this entire deportation issue. There are so many other countries. But I think Gambians are being deported more than any other country. Why do you think is the reason for that? I think um, the, uh, the Gambians to deport it is, is the easiest way. Because yeah. we have, from, from different countries, we have uh, refugees in Germany. And um, the most of them bec uh, come from countries where there is a war. So they don't have the right to bring them back. And the Gambians uh, is only 2% what we have in Germany, only 2%. This is not a lot, yeah? But this 2% is very easy to deport because the Gambians are very uh, silenced. They don't, um, they take everything. They, it's very easy for the Germans to deport them. Other people from other countries, they shout loud and, and um, make stress of them. <laughs> so it's not really easy for the Gambians. Um, they, um, for the Germans, it's easy to for the government or the people who is very easy, who does not make noise. Because I know we make a lot of noise on social media. The deportees themselves. The deportees themselves. The deportees themselves. Yeah. We are very submissive. Anything that's brought to the table, we just take it. Yeah, the people, the people um, who want to help them um, make noises, yes. But the deportees in themselves, they be very careful and silent. Mm. That, that brings me to my next question. When, when, we, when we, I joined the flight with some deportees mm -hmm. and I, I, I observed them making statements, they were really upset, they were pissed off and then um, I approached to say, can we speak to you? But again, they refused to talk to us and some of the people that have put us, the people in Germany have put us in contact with certain people. We had made arrangements up to the last minute and they will not come to the interview. Why do you think they are so silent? Why do you think they don't want to speak to anybody? This, this is the problem what we have too. As a, I was coming here to, Germ, uh, to, to Gambia because um, since four years um, I'm uh, looking for uh, Gambians in my area and help them whatever I can. And um, some of my boys and a lot of others uh, are deported. So I just want to come to visit this country to see um, and to talk to them because uh, I cannot get them anymore. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And um, with some, I was talking uh, some guys who I know from Germany, and uh, they, they all told me the same. Um, this is all so very stressful. They don't on, only want to forget about it. They don't want to talk about it. It was stress to come to Germany. It was stressful the time over there, and uh, very painful to bring them back in this way. Even um, if I, I see it, uh, they, they work with these deportations uh, against every human rights. So obviously, of course, um, Germany is a very big country. It's a confederation. Mm -hmm. And one city's um, policy might differ from another city. So what is the scenario of um, asylum seekers from where you particularly come from? Um, you know, we have a very complicated laws in Germany. Yeah. And um, when they come, the, the biggest problem is they come illegally. Um, so. Uh, they cannot bring them back uh, without any papers. So they force them in every way they can to bring their papers. Uh, so some people tr uh, work and they don't allow them to work without papers. So they bring the papers 
and then they bring them away from their work. They just uh, keep them because they have the papers, so they can do this. Yeah. Um, some other people say put them from 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 school. They take them from school, mm -hmm. come there and take them. Um, they try in every in every situation to come to these papers, and everyone who have it over there um, is. Um, very unsafe there. From a human rights um, perspective, you know, is it even right to, il to, to deport people? Because when you talk about, because um, um, I, I think we have spoken to uh, Jin Kang about this. For example, um, when, they, when, when you even look at asylum, you know, who is qualified for asylum? Um, people will say, um, like you just said, the reason why it's easy to deport Gambians is because there's no war. But remember, we just came from a dictatorship. And uh, we have not yet settled. Economically, Gambians are economically not settled. Mm -hmm. You can be an economic asylee. You can be a you know um, somebody who's running from persecution. Mm -hmm. If we are not running from persecution, but we are running from something because we are not yet economically stable. Mm -hmm. That's the reason why most Gambians are traveling is because of economic reasons. So how do you equate this? Can if you have a good lawyer, should you not be able to defend this from that angle? Uh, are they not giving asylum from those as perspectives? Because uh, I think, and this is the, the, the point, that the German government don't understand that fact that the Gambia is not yet ready, and this would be well something of our final conclusions today, yeah. the Gambia is, and this is I think our all perspective after the time here, uh, the Gambia is not yet ready to take those deportations. Well, maybe in a few years, of course, mm -hmm. Deportations, why they are happening. Mm -hmm. I mean, if I have an intruder in my house that one day will demand for, well, now I'm living in your house, mm -hmm. you have to give me food, work, because I don't, my, my house is bad or yeah. it's poor, then I will throw him out mm -hmm. after some days at least, right? Yeah. So I understand the German side too, mm -hmm. but we should be a little bit, I would say, human. Mm -hmm. And in this case, Germany cannot deport right now to the Gambia. This is what I'm, I'm totally. I'm, I'm standing behind the words Germany cannot deport into a country that is just a very young and fragile democracy. Mm -hmm. Not now. So um, Germany is just not aware of it. Yeah. But how, how do we make them aware, uh, Mohammed? Okay. How do we get them to know that we are not ready for, to get our people back? Okay. Yes, they are our people. We want some, them. Some time ago, Khalifa Salah was in Germany. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He has a meeting with them. He told them we are not ready for the Gambians because of the economical reasons and then we are just from election and the new change of the government. Yeah. But during the changes, mm -hmm. there was visiting of German president to the Gambia. Mm -hmm. And then he promised, German promised to help Gambia in two ways. That's education mm -hmm. and agriculture. Before Gambia, under, Jam, under, their, under their eyes of Germany, Gambia was not announced as a safe country. Then Gambians that are in Gambia, they also find it difficult to have a visa to go to Germany. Germany. But the people that are also in Germany, it will be difficult for you them to for, for German government to bring them back mm -hmm. because Gambia is not a safe country. country. But the time the president came here, mm -hmm. you know, has been mingling with our diplomats, visited so many institutions, GTTI, Ministry of Agriculture, some other place. Then German announced Gambia as a safe country. So you think there was a deal that happened on the ground I, for them to I, change their position? I, I, I don't think there was a deal mm -hmm. behind it. But what I'm trying to say is they make an announcement mm -hmm. that Gambia is a safe country. Okay, And to make them aware Gambia is not yet safe for the refugees to come in. It is the job of our government, especially our interior. And then... The spoke person of the, 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 the vocal person of the government from many to, 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 to Ministry of Foreign so Affairs. Okay. So it is their responsibility to show them our, 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 our difficulties, things that our the things that are, we are facing as of now, economical reasons, social problems, and then you name them. There are a lot of problems that we are facing. But like the interior minister in Germany is saying, you know. They came illegally, and they all have to go back. But you guys met the interior ministry, right? Uh, what? How, how was the meeting like? The meeting there is interesting. You can you can hear from them. They have already made an act to stop this deportation. 
the Ministry of Interior. The, the Interior. Interior already. Ministry. So because they have made an act to stop deportation. They already yeah. wrote to the embassy to Germany and then to the Interior Minister ah. in Germany hmm. to, okay. to, to stop the deportation for now because of. For now. For now. See, that is, the, that is where the problem is because the only reason they are stopping the deportation for now is because things are very tense here in the country. So that clause might not sit well with the people stopping the deportation for now. We're not sure how that's going to work or how it's going to be received by the parents, most especially, yeah, of the deportees. Not, they, the plan is they are not only going to stop. Mm -hmm. They are going to make an MOU between Gambia and mm -hmm. Germany to see the, the Gambians that have future in Germany mm -hmm. to stay in Germany. Wow. Okay. They let them not collect Gambians from their working places, from schools, from hospitals, and deport them back. But criminals in the state that have commit crime, they are welcome to come home. But the sense. people with future, mm -hmm. they can stay in Germany. Have they received anything from the German side? This is the letter that the Gambia, the Interior Minister, have sent to Germany. But have they received anything from the German side to accept the, 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 what they have uh, asked for? Mm, actually, I cannot know that. You don't I think, know because I think to stop, be because we've been informed about a flight that should happen, it never took place. Yes. Oh, wow. So one flight was already stopped. So something is going on. Mm -hmm. And I think, on the other hand, when I have, where I have to defend a little bit the Gambian government again, is mm. they might be also a little bit, I don't want to say afraid, but they yeah. also don't want to uh, have a bad con, you know, condition with Europe, because yeah. of course the Gambia depends a lot on fa funds, foreign aid. right, mm -hmm. and foreign mm -hmm. aid. Yeah. And so they, but definitely they have to return to the negotiation table, because when the German president was in the country. I think it was very fast. It was very early in the stage of converting from a dictatorship to a democracy. So it has to be again, it has to be again talked. Mm -hmm. Many things might be even misunderstood by that time. So and that's why it's I think important that people like Silke is here, they can carry also a message to Germany. I think this is very is a very very interesting development. Knowing that right. uh, the ministry have written to the German authorities to mm -hmm. stop the deportation, That's and right. also because uh, a flight was supposed to come, which has not come, mm -hmm. so we cannot verify whether he's been stopped. But at least that's an interesting development. Mm -hmm. So I think what we will do is we will take our first commercial break. When we come back, we will talk about the state of mind of these boys that are back here. Mm -hmm. Some of them are really devastated. Yeah. A lot of them they are not even talking to the media. And psychologically, how can this affect these people, the families, the economic wise? Because so, like Aradi told us last uh, two weeks ago, mm -hmm. you know, uh, yes, it's good for us to depend on the European aid, but um, do you know the value of one immigrant? Because everything that we make outside, we send back home. The right. value of one immigrant is a lot of money, and the, uh, you know, the amount this, of remittance. The, the remittance is sent. Yeah. You know, this country depends on people outside. Mm -hmm. So it's also important for us to look at from that angle as well. So when we come back, we will look at that, the, the psychological effects, and of course, economically, how, you know, remittances and immigrants help this country. We'll take our first commercial break. Coming up on Care Fatu. When you want to ask me, Mohammed, mm -hmm. how can we make the situation better? Mm -hmm. To me, coming out with force to show anger out, will not change anything. It's not the solution. It's not the solution. Wow. 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 Demal, I'm not going to be able to do I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going I'm a quarter. My money is fast. I see. Yeah. Then I'll be back in a year. Look at that. Jackpot bullet and carte gap TV. Man, I'm doing me fast. I'm going to get a piece of order. My risk. Desert. I'm going to get a piece of order. 
Dreaming of owning a property in a prime location with great proximity and fantastic neighborhood? EJ Investments Sanyang Seaview Estate is the best choice you have been waiting for. Our Sanyang Seaview Estate is approximately 15 minutes drive away from the busy hop of Busubi roundabout and into the heart of nature where you can have a peaceful and relaxed lifestyle with your family. You can buy a finished four bedroom story with five year flexible payment plan or a service plot with two year payment plan option. With over 300 homes, you will enjoy big tar roads with covered drainage, modern electric electrification with solar street lights, gated entrance with security post, and a breath-catching experience of our beautiful sea view and lake view. You can own a home today at our Sanyang Sea View Estate. Call us today on 446-4838 or 325-9220. Visit our website on ejinvestments.net. EJ Investments, first in property. Lempo Warugal Lassi Kepoko Hamne Domi Ruminga at Nufi Deke. Bufeke Nechi at me, Sakom Kom, Wesuna, Nyar Fuka at Nienti Juni Dalasi. Betewer Buneka, Dinga Amlutolo Signari Juni Dalasi. Lempo, a Silangurgi, the Sukan de Kungi Lige Yokute Reum, GRA, Moy Banghas Bunguri Gambia Sas, Girmu Feku Lepolu Lempo, Chibi Reumi. Betahna, GRA, the Yegal Fe Katil Lempoine, Warugala, Purnu Fe, Lununan, Withholding Tax on Contract Payment. Mana. Bepa contract buwa johe te si bi reo mila nyu to kon hali si contract bingen nango to war nga tiye wanyi ki khayma te mer bu neka fuka bu feke ne contract obi deku ti bi reo mi bu boba di nga waro wanyi te mer bu neka fuka ak jurom li mwe lempo bu nyu nan with holding tax on contract payment li mwe lempo bi nga khamne yo mi johe contract waru gala nga wul batu ku dem feyiko ti maka ni GRA tax office bu lage na jege bete ti banki GRA jaglel pur fey lempo war nga djebal lempo bi ci diri fuki fan ak jurom ganaw bi nga wagne ci xali ci contract bi amut ben contracto bu ñu teggel fey lempo bi xana mu fekk ne nguri gambia ñoko djegalé bolé ci project yi nga xamné mbotay ndimbali ñokoy dépense jra di feeku lempo ngir yokoute rew mi every young gambian dream of a university degree he wants a good paying job after graduation, a pretty wife, and ultimately own a dream home. What if I can't afford my Zaya dream home? And that is why you need to visit Universal Properties. We specialize in customer satisfaction. We listen to every of our clients' needs when we saw the properties to our client. Before you know it, you hear the client saying, I like this house. This is the room that cuts my heart. And most of the time, they cling to the door never to let go. Most clients want to close the deal right there. And that is why we always have their contracts in the trunk of our cars. We work at our client's pace. No haggle, no hazard. We're waiting for you at our office in Kairaba Avenue here in the Gambia. Have you run out of cash power? Do you want to transfer funds to your family? Or do you want salary advance without coming to the bank? Your banking services have just been brought to you on your mobile phone. Download and install from your App Store or Google Play Trust Bank's mobile app. Simply search for TBL Mobile App and follow the instructions. You can access the following services. Funds transfer, cash power purchase, Forex rates inquiries, mobile airtime top-up, mini statement, balance inquiry, TBL app, 
is the only app that allows you to take salary advance and many more. You can also interact with your customers using our USSD code by dialing star 533 hash. At Trustbank, we bring innovation that is useful to you, our valued customer. With our mobile app and USSD, banking is at your fingertips. Trustbank Limited, proudly Gambian. Make a difference and text C-A-R CAR to 900 to win a car with Gamsel. Gamsel and Rotary Club of Brusabi brings you a chance to win a brand new SUV Corando. The more you text, the more chances you win. Join Gamsel today for your chance to win a car. Fridge freezers, televisions, smartphones, and lots of cash prizes. Draws will be held live on GRTS TV. Proceeds will be used to help the humanitarian activities of the Rotary Club of Brusubi in the Gambia. Every SMS costs ten dollars. Your SMS could save someone's life. Join us and text C A R CAR to nine zero zero today. A brand new SUV Corando awaits you. Rotary making a difference. Gamsel Yaiboro. Um, welcome back to uh, part two of this interview. I think it's important, Sadio, this will give hope to a lot of people mm -hmm. knowing that the government is uh, making steps to resolving this. I don't know how it's going to go. Uh, it's up to Germany also to, to accept, accept yeah. and, and say, yes, we want to give you time. But I, I think Gambia really m hide, uh, might have a case because considering we are in a transition, we just came from a very dark period, and the country is not stable economically. Even you know, even looking at security-wise, uh, bringing these people when the government, when we are not even internally um, in charge of our own security, we have economic forces here. Mm -hmm. So bringing a lot of people who are upset and who can do a lot of things to the security might be some reason the government should also put across as a case, you know, solving this issue. But one thing I'm also worried about is the um, psychological effects this have on our pe our brothers. Um, I I told you I joined the flight with some people. Yes. Hearing some of them speak, it gets me all emotional. It gets you to know that these people are pissed. Some of them are a little worried. They are, like they don't look good. You know, I I joined the, um, the flight with some of them from Morocco. From the airport, I saw the way. This gentleman, because I didn't know there were five, five other people in the flight, but there was a particular gentleman. They were escorting like five security men were escorting him throughout the environment and it was it was scary emotionally it was torture so and seeing these people the way they came the way he looked nobody would want your family to see you in that situation that is psychologically painful so for somebody who went through the back way somebody who went through the Sahara Desert for somebody who went through all of that pain to get to Italy and cross all the way to Germany, and then to, to, be returned. to be returned in that way, mm. it's painful for anybody. And then they're back home. What are they going to do? How are they received? Uh, yeah, and for me, I just want to jump in when it comes to the receiving part. Mohammed, I think we've met at the airport when they deported, when they deported the last batch. And Fatou, it is absolutely heartbreaking because I think it was just about 20 migrants escorted by 40 German policemen. That is a lot. I mean, they started fighting when they were told um, to, to, to get off the flight. You can see from upstairs, you can see them fighting with the police officers. They were chained, they were cuffed until when they came down. And then, of course, we were having some struggles with the, with the airport officials because they didn't want us to see exactly what was happening. I'm not sure they didn't want us to see or maybe they were just worried for our safety because a camera woman was attacked there. And I can tell you for sure that some of these people are not in their right state of minds. Seriously, these people are psychologically affected. And for the Gambian authority to not show up, I mean, they show up, but to me, that's not enough. Like, come up with a delegation, receive these people appropriately, but you don't just send a couple of immigration officers to pick them up and then drop them off at the airport junction for their families to get them from there. Yeah. So these people, we have a long way to go because these people are psychologically disturbed. And there has been this um, story going around that one of them killed two people in Tanka Tanka. We don't know how, how, how true, true that story, story is. is. So we just tells you that this is absolutely, absolutely serious. It's absolutely serious. For me, you know, when you guys were at the airport, I was worried. For me, I was looking at it from a different angle. I was worried when I saw what was happening. I'm like, how would they feel to be on camera? 
So that's why we, as a media house, uh, decided we not have to, to be a little responsible. responsible to, to, we we decided not to film them because some of them, the way they come back home, they don't want anybody to see them that way. Mm. So we have to also respect their privacy. But what she was talking about, um, the way these people are brought back, you have been to the airport and you have received most of these people. What is your experience of, with some of them? Well, some of them, they are hypnotized because the way they hit the journey, mm -hmm. because if you ask them how they went to Germany, most of them, if they arrived at Europe, they have to be hospitalized mm -hmm. for some time because of their mindsets. It's not okay because of what they have seen on the road and what they have passed through. Okay, when they reach to Germany, everybody is glad. My brother or my sister has already crossed mm -hmm. the transition now. He or she is there. Mm -hmm. Everybody is excited. Okay. And then they expect changes from yeah. their side. They yeah. expect them to support home. Mm -hmm. So when they are in when they went, one of the one of the reasons why they don't never want to come home is because they don't they don't they don't have it yet. But when you look at the German system, there is a system whereby you can come voluntarily and you will be supported. Seventy five percent and IMO. IOM, I don't know. IOM, I -O -M. I -O -M yeah. will also support you, and you will be given two thousand euros to come home. And then there are some people that has gone through that transition. I received them. Them, okay. They came home voluntarily. Mm -hmm. Okay. Maybe I believe some of them will choose to do that because their family accepted them. There is no discrimination coming out from their family. Mm -hmm. If a son is having a discrimination from a family and from a society, they will never like to show out. Because we all know our system, we all know our people. One of the things that affect them psychologically is our own people. Yeah, the stigmatization. Stigmatization. Okay, mm -hmm. from the airport, how they are received from the from from the way the, the, the Gambian government, from the immigration department, you know, they should they should not even bring them through the back door in the first place. They bring them to a terminal whereby nobody is using that terminal no more, mm -hmm. trying to find it trying to make it difficult for, 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 the, for, families. for the families and people mm -hmm. to get to them. You know, and then most of them believe if they are home, they are bringing only criminals home. Yeah. They have been doing crimes in Germany. And then we all know our people. Some, some people can look at you and tell you, you had the chance to be there and you did nothing. Yeah. And now they bring you home, you want to take my place or you want to do this to me. Psychologically, they will be affected. They will feel like they are not welcomed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that will affect them. Okay, when you look at um, the way they are escorted to, like a guy I received with a name, Mr. No Name, mm -hmm. he was seriously injured yeah. in Germany. We had that story, yes. He, he caught himself because he don't want to leave, according to him, he don't want to leave his baby behind. Wow. He has a child in he has Germany? He a baby in Germany. Okay, so. He is parked, and but he was forced before I get to him. He was get he, he was picked by his uncle. Take him home. I meet him. I met him rather having smiles on his face. But as time goes by, when messages come into his phone, he sees things happening in Germany. He is disturbed again. Or he has a message from his wife. He is disturbed again, because for 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 several times I will bring him down, cool him, balance him. Tell him, look, it's gonna be okay. You have still have a chance of going back. These are kind of the hopes I used to give him. Words of hope that will keep them, keep you know. Moving, yeah. So I took him to the hospital, pay the bills. The money was not from my pocket, but from the network, paid by one of one of Your one supporter. of one of the supporters, one of a noble man called Norbert. Mm -hmm. You know, so things like that, things the way they are brought, and then. They had no chance to pick some of their stuff, you know, in Germany before they will get to Africa. And these are some of the things affecting our brothers. You know, it's very sad, especially Ibrahima, when um, when you 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 go to Germany and you're thinking of helping your family, and all of a sudden you brought home without even a bag, and then the family that is relying. Some people went went to Germany selling everything they own in this country, mm -hmm. selling the family's assets. And coming back and with nothing, it's very painful for some of these people. Psychologically, psychologically, what can we do to help our brothers? 
What I want to say is what Silke said before. We think that there are human rights viola viola violations, violations yeah. because uh, 40 security officers, 60 in case even, uh, two each okay. deportee. That's what we heard from witnesses. One deportee, two security officers in the plane. Ha handcuffed and mm -hmm. defeat for the whole flight, six hours. This is the situation what we heard from different witnesses, right? So, and um, from the deportees, and I think there is human rights violations. Vi violations going on because I was a pilot even for freight planes, but I know that these high security measures are not even necessary by mm -hmm. international aeronautic standards. We are not in America here, so yeah. why is Germany doing it with that massive force? You know, that's for the point of the human rights what we are also into and we are trying to evaluate if something like this happened there. Right? And of course, for the families it must be a horrible situation, but we can say in the end that we should welcome every deportee here as a small hero because they are pioneers. Those people made Gambia known in the Western world, before Germany maybe not even aware of the Gambia. So they been people that also made the way that did this struggle for something because for generations to come and maybe for in the end an outcome that will uh, bring good uh, contracts between both countries to further the education and uh, the collaboration between both countries in the future. So we should not welcome them as criminals or as mm -hmm. losers in my opinion. We should welcome them as everyone is a small hero in my mm -hmm. opinion. And then um, we, um, we, we have also heard from different accounts, because there are so many people who are worried about the situation, that in Germany now, even in the camps, the boys don't sleep in their houses. Because they're, they're worried that every single day someone is just going to come. Because they are not, it's not like you're being arrested, they're just, at the night they will just come to your house, knock at your door and take you. What is the situation like in Germany right now? And how bad it is for, for people, because now you're not even safe in your own home. Mm -hmm. They were never. Since they are there, they were never. At first, uh, they deport him to, to Italy, and now they deport him direct to Gambia. Um, they, um, I learned the boys there. Uh, they go to bed with the clothes, shoes in front of the bed that they only can jump in when go. They were all the time afraid that someone come for them. And this was not a good life. There was the stress from the back way. Germany. Uh, give them another stress on the top yeah. and now the stress to, for the deportations. These boys are really um, stressed. <laughs> I, I can't believe that they don't want to talk to anyone. Um, we, we meet some boys and uh, always when they realize there are more people who want to hear about his story, they even cut. They don't feel well, they talk to me directly, but they don't want anyone is included there. Um, because they feel ashamed. They said, um, everybody uh, give me this uh, disrespect because they think I'm a, a prisoner. Whilst they are not, the most of them are not from the prison. This boy who I know are not from the prison. This is the they were working, they have to do their job, they were going to school. This is um, a, a false information and I don't know who, who was shouting out this information. They are not all prisoners. So this is the misconception that we have. Yeah. Gambians think that the people that are being deported are the criminals, are criminals. out there. So this is another yeah. issue that has to be tackled. Yeah, because I so remember this guy, same guy at the airport was saying, I have never smoked. I don't even know what drugs look like. I was at work when I was picked up. Mm -hmm. And he said, all I do is recite my Quran because I want to be safe. I want to get my papers here. So it's emotional. It is really, really sad. And I just want to ask, um, because as human rights activists, you can only do so much. What do you hope to achieve from this trip? I, I heard a lot, yeah, but I, I like to see it for myself. And I really was um, want to use the chance to talk to the deportees directly, mm -hmm. only to know why, why they don't want to talk to someone. I understand them totally. I can understand it. Um, I saw a lot, I, I meet a lot, uh, we talk a lot, we had a lot of appointments. Um, uh, for me, um, I think um, the government of, of Gambia 
is um, not strong enough against Europe. Yeah? They cannot do much against them. And when Germany wants to deport, what they should do? Germany would stop putting those people in planes. Like, whoever they just can get hands on, come, go. If they have to stop it, because Gambia is not strong enough to say no, because mm -hmm. then Germany will give them consequences. We saw this happening in Ghana, when mm -hmm. Ghana was, I think, rejecting a few months, uh, weeks ago uh, deportees from the United States. States and yeah. the United States immediately said, okay, then visa no visa ban. for you, yeah. visa. Mm -hmm. So I think yeah, this is something the Gambian government want to avoid now. That's why I say negotiations is what we are calling for. That's why I think also she will, in Germany, will go to the media more out and there must be negotiations. Gambia is not that small that Germany just can say we can deport, no one will care. And uh, that's why we have to try to have a little bit understanding for our government too. Uh, I hope that also Germany will see that the Gambians are not satisfied with those deportations because I hope it will be carried out through Germany as well that the Germans see, yeah, we cannot deport whoever we want. We really have to see someone that is in work, someone that has a family, someone that is going to school, they can stay. And the few criminals, if there are even some criminals, maybe yes, because of course, or at least yeah. people that are yeah. not doing nothing. Because mm -hmm. to be honest, in the years that I stayed in Germany, I also saw Gambians that are really a little bit, some let me say, lazy. Few, right? yeah, yeah. But so I think the system makes them like that. The system if they want to give course, them yeah. a work that they have anything to do, they will never think about to do anything. Mm -hmm. uh, but then the them. media, the media plays a big role in all of this. Of uh, for example, for a small country like Gambia, I know if if we are able to make a lot of noise to the level of the German authorities, do you think that will help to change the cause of things? To me, unnecessary noise will never make a change. What do you think can make creative it? mind in a critical situation? Like how negotiation. MOU between the Gambia government and the German government because if you see so most of this uh, How to call it deportees they don't enter in Germany through Germany They enter through Italy, Italy yeah. and then come to Germany mm -hmm. to, uh, By normal procedure German should take them back to Italy and then Italy should do something to them mm -hmm. and Up to today. We never had Italy started deportation, but they have more problem even than Germany mm -hmm. today. But there is a reason and I want to point that reason out because I think it is important to understand why Italy is not deporting people. Mm -hmm. Why? Italy receives a lot of money for every refugee they have in the country from the European Union. Mm -hmm. And right. uh, even it sounds very wicked, but it is like this. The Italian government is happy about all this money that they receive from the European Union for the refugees mm -hmm. in the country of Italy. So they will not deport anyone. Of even course, the Italians will say the migrants. And of course, the water. migrants. Yeah. To, there is this concern that the government did sign an agreement. I think it's important to clarify this. There is this um, concern that the government did sign an agreement with the European Union, with Germany, to bring Gambians back home. And the government uh, did issue a statement uh, saying that is not true, they never signed. You guys are here on a fact finding. Have you got uh, any information on whether there was an agreement signed between the Gamma government and Germany to bring their boys back home? Or was there any information that you got, got regarding this? I received uh, a message from a German high ranked parliamentarian. His name is Dr. Gregor Gysi. He is also the president of the European Left Party and a well-known politician and he confirmed with signature that there was never any agreement between the Gambia and Germany for deportations. It was never signed. So it, this is a rumor. It was never so signed. I can with a good mind confirm the statement made by the Gambian government. The definitely there was no agreement definitely signed. Definitely there was no agreement signed and this person is trustful and yeah, he's a high-ranked German parliament member. But then there is also argument that um, there was money given by the European Union to integrate these boys uh, because uh, it's all coming from the same angle that uh, there was an agreement signed but also European Union gave a lot of money to the government in millions of euro to integrate these boys and you know the, the funny part also is we get a lot of information that there are a lot of organizations uh, who are claiming to be supporting these boys and they collect money from these um, organizations from Europe just in the name of helping to resettle these boys. But the information we got when these boys got to the airport, they were giving $200. Who, 
who gave those 200 dollars and where is the money that is being claimed that was given by the European Union do you have any information on that yeah that is our question too hmm. because we are still asking why the, deport the, the deportees are receiving 200 dollars and then been, uh, been dropped at the gate of the airport mm -hmm. so where is the money of EU this question goes to if the government is receiving money for the deportees and then private um, organizations also where is the money for the for the for the for the deportees but did the government receive anything do you have any I, information i have no information whether they received or not but if they are receiving they should really look after these young people and giving them enough money to take them home than 200 dollars because I have been given transport to a lot of, lot of refugees from my, own, from my own pocket. And even I used to pick some of them with my car to drop them to their uh, private homes. You know, what is the reason? Because they have no, some of them will not contact their family that they are come. They are, they are already they been, cannot, yeah. they, are, they, are, they, are, they are They are on the way coming. Mm -hmm. They just come like that, surprisingly, with, go to their parents. And then I visited this place called IMO for I don't IOM. 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 Mm -hmm. I asked them, why are you people not coming to the to the to the, to the to, airport to, the to airport. help to help this this deportees? So, you know, the answer was, it's not their job. Hmm. This is what they tell us. Yes. <laughs> their job is only those people who come back for voluntarily they, well, they, who they voluntarily come, come back. back so these are the people they are they're helping. helping to resettle but i believe there are other organizations out there that are leave that are taking money from eu giving hopes to the eu that they will help these deportees but they are not most of the helps that i have seen so far to these deportees these are private german helpers that are sending money to take care of these deportees <music> Sophie, mais on la vous sel, ténère, bar naturel, avec maquillep, amna calcium, iron, protéines, avec vitamine you body. Sophie, full cream powder milk la, amna 20 gram, 200 gram, avec 400 gram. Coco nyam do tu ko bai. Sophie, proudly Gambian. Better and stronger as the sole ground operator at the Banjul International Airport. With an expansion in travel services, customers are assured of GIA's capacity to cater for all their travel needs, provided by professional, experienced and ever-smiling staff. GIA's Hajj package and services by far the best in the country give the customers the opportunity for a memorable Hajj experience. For a more efficient cargo services, GIA means business as it launches its new multi-million dollar ultra-modern cargo complex to revitalize and stimulate air transport. GIA, the pride of the Gambia. But then what is the way forward though? What is the way forward? As he say, negotiations. The, the government has to return back to real negotiations with Germany and find a, a, a solution for, for this problem, for this issue. Deportations alone will just destroy this young democracy very soon because mm. it is then people might come and say, well, the former government was better, no one was deported. So this will be the next thing that will be happening in the country. That is what I am concerned of. Yes, that's so important. In fact, that is what is coming up. Because people are using it to score political points. Yeah, Everybody exactly. is trying to... Uh, in, the, in the meeting in the interior, that, that is their fear too. Okay. Because yeah, okay. they don't, they said even them, they are not safe. Yes. They said okay. it directly. They said it directly uh -huh. because, and if you look at the interview where with the vice president, he said they will never be wicked to their own sons and daughters. Uh -huh. Okay, but 
when you look at in another aspect, some people are trying to make to, to like he said, to spoil the democracy and the peace of this country. Mm -hmm. You know, to my when you when you want to ask me, Mohammed, mm -hmm. how can we make the situation better? Mm -hmm. To me, coming out with force to sow anger out will not change anything. It's not the solution. It's not the solution. Because people might misunderstood it, you know, put it in a wrong way. You were in the airport. You saw it, a guy in a in a in a in a in a in a, in a very angry mood mm -hmm. trying to hit a woman. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then who knows? I think he was the one who even get the psychological problem. You know, so if people did not understand, we should think about first the vulnerables because there were rumors, there were audios, there were tips going out. We should burn this place. We should do this. We should do that. So what? Is the security where does the security if this country where in a moment like tomorrow when people are angry people are coming out you were in the airport mm -hmm. when this old man came yes. he said why are they still inside there when they are already deported home and they are home what what are they doing what's with the, the point immigration? of keeping them what's they're the already here in the gambia them? release them and out the, of that, the, airport. the old man was angry mm -hmm. in the first place and was he was unstoppable he was attacking them so we should trust our government yes. and give yeah. them the chance hence they have already started to to to, to make a negotiation with the german interior let us give them time it's interesting to have a young man like him bring that um that angle because uh, a lot of people are hurting a lot of families are hurting mm -hmm. mine and other families but i think it's also important that we handle it with care uh, the Gambia belongs to all of us so finally um ibrahim what's your message especially to the government to the government is my message is they should not be afraid they should go out with every information they have and we are one small nation here, the Gambia. It has half of the inhabitants of the city of Berlin, which is the capital of Germany, half of the inhabitants. The government could go to the public and say, well, we've been now forced or we cannot say no to Europe, but let us work together on a solution. We don't really know what to do. We are your government, yes, but we need also the support of the people itself, of the, of the people of the Gambia. We have to stay together because we are such a small, young nation and uh, we cannot run into the next crisis. What's your message? And the people have to trust their government. Of course. They have really worked together. This will never work when, when they work again. Against this, Mohammed, final message. You know, let's love Africa, especially our country. And there is a saying of a wise man who once said, every African needs a village. If you don't have a village, go look for one, because every village is a universe. Mm -hmm. So let's love our country, love our nation. God bless us. Ah, thank you. And thank you. greetings to all our chairman, yeah. refugees over there. Mm -hmm. What's your message to your German refugees out there? We will not let you alone. We will fight you t uh, for you till the end. Wow, that is, that's a strong message. That's a strong message. And Sorry. I just want to say, hang in there, brothers. There is more to life. Yeah. And to the families, uh, let's support these brothers. Uh, they went through a lot. And coming back home is not the, busy, not the best um, decision. And it's not anything that they wanted. And it's important. It's a very critical uh, point. It's a very critical situation for so many families. And some families, you can understand why they will go that far. Because this uh, might be the person that supports the entire family. So it's a very uh, tough time for families, but we want to give you all the courage. And to the brothers out there, stay strong. Thank you very much and good night to you all. Bye-bye.